Question number 3. Diagram 2 shows two straight lines L1, L2 drawn based on five plotted points on this graph. Okay, 1 over y against x squared. Question A. Which straight line is suitable of best fit? Give a reason for your answer. So for it to be a best fit line, the line of best fit, you have to fulfill two conditions. What are the two conditions? The first condition is you have to connect to as many as many points as possible. So this is the first condition. The second condition is that it has to have equal number of points on both sides. Okay, we want to keep it as balanced as possible. So that means if I got a line here, I want it to be like, if let's say this, these two points are, these four points are not connected, then we can see it's balanced. Okay, two on the left, two on the right, or two on top, two at the bottom. So we want to keep it as balanced as possible. Okay, so in this case, which one will give you, uh, which one will fulfill these two conditions? So I would say the, the one that fulfills these two will be L1. So the answer is L1. Okay, L1 is line. Okay, because you got one here, one here, and you're also connecting as many as possible. And you can see that like, it's kind of like following the trend as well, right? It's like going up, following the points going up, right? So it, I think it's it's a more suitable answer. Lah. Okay, so your explanation, they asked to give a reason, right? So you just explain this, okay? Question B. Given that 10, 9 lies on the line of best fit, express y in terms of x. Okay, so they want you to find the equation. Alright, so this is a straight line. So we can start off by writing y equals mx plus c. Now we can't just stop here because y equals mx plus c, we know that y is the y-axis, I mean, yeah, the y-axis, and the x is the x-axis. But in this case, the y-axis is actually 1 over y, and x-axis is 1 over x, eh, sorry, the x-axis is x squared. So we're going to replace the y and x with that. x square plus c okay so the first thing we have to do is we want to find the gradient and then after that we find the y intercept okay to get the equation so gradient gradient formula is y2 minus y1 or x2 minus x1 so we need two coordinates so the first coordinate we can use since we're using l1 line l1 so it passed it passed through 6 7 right we know this coordinate so we can use 6 7 and another coordinate we can use is 10, 9, because they say it lies on the line. Okay, so we can use two of this uh, coordinate. So the formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I can do 9 minus 7 over 10 minus 6. So 9 minus 7 is 2, 10 minus 6 is 4, so it's 1 over 2. Okay, so the gradient here is 1 over 2. So 1 over y equals 1 over 2x squared plus c. Okay, so we want to find the value of c. Since we don't have the y-intercept on this graph here, on the image here, so what we have to do is we have to substitute one of the points. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to take 6, 7 because 6, 7 is already on the line. So I'm going to use 6, 7. Okay, so 6 and 7. So 6, 7 is not x and y. Eh? 6 and 7 is not x and y. 6 is x squared. And 7 is 1 over y. Okay, I know some people, what they do is, they substitute 6 and the 7 as x and y. Then you write like this. 1 over 7 equals 1 over 2, 6 squared plus c. If you write like this, your answer is wrong. Eh? Because 7 and 6 is not uh, y value and x value is the what it six represents the x uh, x square and seven represents one over y. Okay, so in this case, seven equals one over two times six plus c. 
So 7 equals 3 plus C. So C equals to 7 minus 3 is 4. So your equation now becomes 1 over Y equals 1 over 2X squared plus 4. Okay, so this is your equation. But we want to express Y in terms of X. So the subject has to be Y. So what we can do is we can combine this into a fraction. So that means this is over 1, right? So times 2 times 2. So we get 1 over y equals x squared plus 8 over 2. Okay? Yeah. So what I can do, I just have to flip it. So when I flip the fraction, I get y equals to 2 over x squared plus 8. So this is your answer.